this year's Oscars were a real snapshot into what is kind of going on with our media. The big story of yesterday was the La La Land Moonlight Oscars thing. Not because it was actually particularly newsworthy, but because the media loves failure. It's an extension of if it bleeds, it leads. If somebody's suffering, people are more likely to engage with it. This is something, unlike violence in video games and sexism in video games and all these things that actually don't cultivate opinions, don't create operant conditioning, this has actually been shown to, to cultivate an unduly negative view of the world. We've got this though, and then we've got the good old New York Times all over it. Oh, it threatens the reputation of the accounting firm that does it. And this picture here is misleading because that's not what the envelope actually looked like. When you see here, there's no identifying mark on the outside of these red envelopes that I can see, which is probably one of the reasons the mistakes got made. But what did the Wall Street Journal, a very pro-business paper, say? Oh, there we are. They're connecting the fact that the accountant was tweeting you would be forgiven for thinking this is somehow groundbreaking news that is going to change the world. But something else happened on Oscar night that is actually a more relevant historical first. What could it be, you ask, my voice dripping with sarcasm? Boom! Mayor Shala Ali is the first Muslim actor to win an Academy Award, but it goes deeper than this. He is the first Muslim actor to win an Academy Award in a film based on a coming of age story of a black gay youth in a year where multiple films about the black experience that showed black people as something other than slaves were nominated or parts of them were nominated for an Academy Award. This is bread and circuses, folks. This started when I was still working in music programming. It started in the George W. Bush years. Remember the last worst president America's ever had, according to liberals? I think Jimmy Carter is still the worst president that America's ever had, according to conservatives, although some would say Obama, but I think there's still greater consensus on Carter. It ironically became harder for Canadian media to cross the border pre 9-11 because we were constantly getting our visas questioned and getting detained and denied entry and you got the wrong visa, kind of like what's happening now. We're going down to Los Angeles to cover an American musician with an American record company so that they can sell their albums to Canadians and they're stopping us at the border because they were trying to claim that no, we didn't enter the country, somebody else could do our job. People were having to argue with the consulate. One guy I knew got banned from trying to enter the US for five years. They had to get lawyers to fight it. But during that time, there was also a chill on political reporting. We have forgotten completely about this in our race to make Donald Trump appear to be the antichrist. But that was when media started changing celebrity started replacing political reporting in terms of volume in the press. All of a sudden the arts started being considered quasi hard news. Why there was access. Now media with alarming regularity likes to confuse a curiosity with news. This actually is a mark in history. This is the journalistic equivalent of somebody slipping and falling on a banana peel. You know, this gets into whether who wins an Oscar is really important. Do the Oscars really celebrate important movies? And the reality is the Oscars have a really bad track record of picking winners. The two most culturally important film franchises of my lifetime, Star Wars, and uh, Harry Potter have been really ignored 
So is the best picture really the best picture in terms of cultural influence, in terms of longevity? No. What the Oscars do is take these small films that could really use the help, and so they falsely label it an important film. And so people actually go to see it. Moonlight, I didn't even know what that movie was about. All I really knew about it is there's this the scene where Mayor Shala Ali is wet, and okay, that's a selling point. But there's a, a deeper cultural significance because of that, you know, intersection of the black community and 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 gay kids, especially gay young young men. I mean, I grew up and you heard, you know, Bambaklat and Batiman all over the halls of my high school. The music we listened to, there was a lot of homophobia. There's a particular challenge in this, and it's great that there's a movie about it. I just had no idea that that was what it was about. And now that I know, I'm interested in the movies. Let's face it, the Oscars had to be shamed into actually creating a structure that rewarded non-white cinema, unless it's a foreign film, right? What we need to watch now and why it's important to sort of stick a pin in this for the purposes of news gathering, not just clickbait headlines, is this just the sort of temporary response to shaming the Oscars into being more aware of black actors and black film, black writers, black directors, all that stuff? Or is this the beginning of real change? And when it comes to things like female directors and, and women not on screen, but behind the scenes as actual IP creators, there hasn't been lasting change. The numbers go up and then they drop down. The numbers grow up and then they drop down. And I'm fairly sure that part of the reason the mainstream media focuses so much on sexism in video games right now is they don't want people looking at what's going on in their own house. But if we focus on this story and do not allow ourselves to be distracted, we can now watch the Academy and we can now watch Hollywood and make sure that this is not just a blip and not because of some politically correct thing, because a good movie is a good movie. The color and gender of the protagonist or the director or the writer should not matter. But this is the difference between something that's truly newsworthy and something that's just a distraction. This we can mark and check back in to see next year, the year after the year after that, what's being done. This nobody's gonna care about this a year from now.